High Phonics Pluto. That's right. We have High Phonics Pluto version 7. Even though these days Pluto doesn't get much love. Being taken away from our planetary system now called a dwarf planet. Let's move on to the real High Phonics Pluto Series 7. 60 watts. Back from the late 1980s into the early 1990s. The Series 7 was Zed Audio designed and still very popular these days for sound quality aficionados. Here on one side of the amp, very basic, you see the Hyphonics logo, you see left and right RCA inputs, level control from 0.25 up to 2.5 volts. Then we have a power and diagnostic LED on the right side and a reminder that this is made in USA. That's right. Back in the day. On the opposite side, not a whole lot going on. We have power and ground wire coming out. We have a plug on the amp for the left and right speakers as well as remote turn on wire. We will show that here in just a minute. Here it is. The good old Molex plug. This one has five pins out of the six utilized. And yes, we are using a barrier strip there. We'll have a link in the video description to those. That way you don't keep wasting your wires of your old school amps. You can use one of these barrier strips. It makes it really easy to hook up to your speakers. See? There you go. Just screw down terminals just like these amps should have had. It's really interesting to see these have 8 gauge power and ground for such a small amp. Back in April of 1989, Car Audio and Electronics had their first directory, which showed off all the different car audio amplifiers and head units and everything else. And in this... Issue was a several page ad for Hyphonics, which was literally just a brochure within the magazine, showed off all the different models, specifications, and everything like that. Now, let's move back to the magazine. Here we can see the Pluto version 7, $210.1989 is equivalent to about $525 in 2024. As for the dimensions of the amp, 8.7 inches by 3.9 by 2.5 inches. As for ratings, this was their second smallest amplifier out of 16 at 4 ohms rated 30 by 2, 2 ohms 60 by 2, or 120 watts at 4 ohms bridged. I never understand why some companies use red or orange for power LEDs. In my opinion, it needs to be green or blue. Those are good or go, whereas orange or red says no good. But anyway, it powers up with the orange LED. First up, we're going to hook the amp up stereo. Hooking up both channels to the amp dyno, it is rated 30 watts by 2. We're testing at 1 kilohertz. Here is the test first certified. Can we get the 30 by 2? Yes, we get 39 by 2 right at 14 volts. Let's try it uncertified up to the clipping point. See if we can beat 39 watts. And yes, we do. 42 watts per channel. The channel equality here is really good on this 25-year-old amplifier. Let's try dynamic, which sends a one kilohertz pulse tone into the amp. You can see here very close to 44 watts per channel, right at 14 volts. Not bad. Let's try two ohms. It's rated 60 watts by two, which is kind of unusual for an amplifier to double its rating. That typically doesn't happen with class AB amps, but here we go, 66 watts per channel, right at 14 volts. So it definitely does the 60 plus a little bit more uncertified to clipping do we beat 66 yes we do <laughs> and to check this out 81 watts per channel at 13.95 lastly we'll do the dynamic pulse track test here simulating IHF 202 and yes right around 85 watts per channel right at 14 volts wow I'm kind of impressed to be honest Next up, we're gonna bridge the amp using the violet and gray wires. And you can use a Y adapter if you only have a single RCA coming in. It is rated 120 watts from 11.5 to 16 volts. This is a regulated power supply. Certified test to 1% distortion, 135 watts, 139, excuse me, at 14 volts. Next up, we'll run the uncertified test, takes us up to the clipping point. Generally gives us just a little bit more power. And this one keeps going, check it out. 174, right at 14 volts. Lastly, dynamic, four ohms, one kilohertz. Here we go, we're gonna beat 180. 179 at 14.05 volts. Here are all the results I just showed, plus the eight ohm test, which I did not show. 
Efficiencies are mid 40s to mid 50s, which is about what we expect. This ant performed well. It met and be- exceeded its ratings. Pretty impressive for a 25 year old ant that has not been touched, I don't believe, since it was new. Now that we've tested the ratings, let's hook it up to some speakers and see how it sounds. Overall, the amp sounded good with the Elec bookshelf speakers, but I did notice the amp I tested after this actually sounded better, but we'll talk about that later when I show the amp off. Now let's take off the end plate here, or the side plate, I guess you'd call it, so that we can get to the inside of the amp. Let's take off four screws plus the one that holds the RCAs that takes off this end panel. Just, it's amazing the condition of this amp and how good quality it is to be 25 years old it looks like it's just a couple years old these amps when you flip them over you have to slide the bottom plate off and you have to be careful because some of them actually have a little latch there on one side this one did not so you don't have to loosen up the other side panel here you go taking off one side plate taking off the bottom panel and here's the pluto model badge which is really amazingly good condition and not only that the quality of this thing it's aluminum it just looks like it's super fancy, like it cost a lot of money to make that thing back in the day. Here's the internals, typical Z audio design amplifier. And this one, not a whole lot going on here because it's not very powerful. But here you can see a 2200 microfarad, 35 volt Nichicon there near the power supply section. Then we have 470 microfarad, 35 volts. Look like those are for the rails. Pluto made in the USA, stamped right on the circuit board. Now, since this was one of the smaller Hyphonics, I don't believe this one had the very power design, but it did have the regulated power supply. So you could use it from 11.5 to 16 volts and get about the same output power. And here's a few other amps that we're gonna test out coming in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Now just for kicks, we ran the 4 ohm mono test at 40 hertz just to give a comparison to the one kilohertz. And we still got 142 watts, it's rated 120. So it definitely did its rated power plus a little more. But we also ran two ohms dynamic at one kilohertz. This amp is not rated two ohms mono, but you can see this little tiny class AB amp kicking it 230 watts, 13.97. Big D, I'm out.